Welcome to Fun with Failure. If you're like me, you like snack food. And one of those snack foods I like the most is gummy bears. But when you tear open that pack of whatever snack food you get, you need to be careful because you might be getting more than you bargained for. I found one such snack that I want to share with you and the hilarity that ensues. Here are five of the funniest sugar-free gummy bear reviews I could find. So without further ado, here we go. I sit here writing this review at 4 a.m. for my porcelain throne, a fixture you will become all too familiar with if you choose to eat these cute little bears from the pits of hell. Had to eat a pound of these little jerks after Man City must have thought they were playing American football the other week and lost to a team of Arsenal scrubs. They were a bit chewy overall. Appears to be nothing more than your average gummy bears. After about two hours, with little more than some mild stomach cramps, fillings that one would expect from eating a pound of any candy, I began to wonder if I'd gotten some duds. Like the slow buildup of a Martin Scorsese film, however, these bears were waiting for their baptism scene to destroy my insides. It started with the cramping, very akin to doing 1,000 crunches, and then being forced to hold the 101st crunch indefinitely. Then came the initial run, which opened the proverbial floodgates. I'm over 30, and I'm beginning to wonder if these bears had known that, and wanted to send me back to the can for each year I've been on this earth, to make me wonder why I'd ever been born. In between gastrointestinal intestinal bouts of pressure washing the inside of my toilet with my anus, I lay in bed feeling if someone was to punch me in the stomach, I'd explode, turning the walls of my bedroom into a soiled Jackson Pollock rendition. To give you an idea, I spent $50 ordering a UFC pay-per-view, only to willingly miss the last two to three fights on the main card because I didn't want to stray too far from my master bathroom. Thankfully for me and my marriage, fearing what might be coming, I convinced my wife to spend the evening at my sister-in-law's. Because trust me, fellas, nothing will be gained from your significant other experiencing this with you. I'm no longer in pain, but I'm still having to make trips back to my master bathroom on a regular basis. Eat these if you dare, but be forewarned. They are not to be trifled with, unless you want your toilet to be the staging ground for repeat fecal rehearsals of the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones. To preface this, I will state that it is not good to upset anyone in the military supply network. This is essentially true for a supply NCO, who can be both creative and vindictive to those who earn his ire. One of my biggest pet peeves was troopies who walked into my supply room and decided to go through my things on my computer or desk. It was for that reason that I purchased two bags of these sweet little revenge snacks. I briefed my minions that morning that the snacks were to be unsoiled by their hands. I told them that I would know, and it would not go unpunished by both myself and the higher powers. They thought I was joking, but decided not to test my authority before my eyes. With that said, I placed the bowl on the back part of my counter, just in reach for anyone loitering inside of my supply room. The rules were posted for all to see when they came in, so they were warned. A large sign that said, if you touch my stuff, you will be punished. They decided to test me, I guess. On this weekend, we were set to do general cleaning and maintenance within the battalion, so my desk was rather busy, battalion headquarters supply room. I was in and out of my office all day. However, I made sure to take general measurements of my bowl of horror every time I came back. Shortly before lunch, my unholy wrath began to strike. My supply room is one door down from the latrines, and the row of milk modes is on the other side of the wall. It was the first, but not the last. It was initially heralded by the sound of Gabriel's trumpet, escaping the sphincter of one poor soul. He hit the latrine and sounded as if he kicked the stall door open. For the next 30 minutes, I listened to the sound of a live humpback whale being butchered by blind men wielding a chainsaw. It wasn't long before another troop, this time a female, made her way to the latrine. She came from the indoor pistol range and had to cross the front of my door. I saw a pale woman with sweat streaking down her face. She was hobbling with one hand on the wall for support and the other on her stomach praying for just a little more time. For lunch, I ripped into my MRE, the Army Brown Bag Lunch, 
and I listened to the ever-growing chorus of those who had so far snuck down half of my bowl of brightly covered improvised colon explosive devices. I was not sure if the other side of the building was seeing the same activity, but the smell reached my door by the end of lunch. Good thing I was stationed with the infantry unit for the first four years of my career, so I was accustomed to bad odors. One of my minions did not return from lunch, so I volunteered another to perform a possibly suicidal scout mission into the male latrine and search for my wayward soul. He was there, and he had been there since the beginning of lunch. By 1500, or 3 p.m., I was told that the unit was being locked down, and there was going to be an emergency meeting in the battalion briefing room. I had a suspicion for the reason, but attended as I was ordered to do so. By this time, my bowl of gelatinous, bowel, howitzer, ammunition was one quarter filled. The meeting began slightly off schedule. At 1522, the sergeant major walked into the room and looked as if he had performed a three-day combat operation without sleep. The battalion XO walked in not long after and looked as if he had been immediately assaulted by a rather insistent horse. I used all of my military bearing to keep from cracking a joke about cavalry officers walking around bow-legged. The battalion surgeon walked in and told us that there was a high chance that the unit had come into contact with a strange stomach bug. Roughly half of the battalion was complaining of stomach cramps and explosive diarrhea. It seemed to be mostly affecting HHC or the headquarters and C Company, the company that was on the same side of the building as us, also the medics. Until the symptoms cleared up, the unit was in lockdown and cleaning mode. I went back to my supply room with the intent to bag up the remaining evidence of my involvement, only to find the bowl was missing. My minions were too wrapped up to notice anything though. So I began to search for the evidence that would probably land me in front of the firing squad. The empty bowl was located in the administration offices. Someone found it and decided to liberate it from my supply room for the only group that I didn't want to upset. But they had already consumed the remainder of the biological weapons. As I left with the bowl, I heard the familiar sound of incoming fire from the senior pay clerk's desk, followed shortly after by what sounded like Lamaze breathing. That weekend, the entire building was clean from one side to the other. MREs were consumed in the hopes of plugging the torrential flood of liquid terror, and every window and door was opened, with fans going over a cup of pine saw in every room. Three quarters of the enlisted and half of the officers were hit with this mysterious stomach bug, and the medical supply room was in desperate need of more IV kits. I don't know if my message got across, but it was definitely an entertaining weekend. A day that will live in infamy. I was suddenly and deliberately attacked by these evil gummy bears. It all started a day prior when my sugar tooth persuaded me to eat two handfuls of these sugar free delights. Fast forward 15 hours, 23 minutes, and 44 seconds later, the world shook. All hell broke loose inside of me. A sudden headache, my skin began to perspire, and something tore around in my abdomen with enough force to make me latch onto my couch with both hands and let out a sheer cry that sent my dog retreating into the bedroom. She probably knew that the battle was already lost. I tried to make for the bathroom, but the pressure was so intense, I had to wait it out on the couch until a lapse in the gut busting occurred and I regained control of my muscles. It took only moments before the volcano Mount Anus blew its top. The air quickly turned gaseous from the methane and sulfuric fumes that spewed forth. Violence and terror are underestimated of what happened the next 45 minutes. I sustained third degree burns from contact with the lava that flowed abruptly from my bowels. My blood pressure was at record levels and my body mass was reduced by four pounds. After ample ventilation of the crime scene, I quickly took a shower and changed clothes because the powerful fumes had soaked through the fabric and into my skin. I almost had a mental breakdown in the shower. After realizing that those little gummy bears had nearly defeated such a man that I thought I was, I can now hardly bear to look through the night terrors and PTSD that will come from this horrid event. So it started out a regular Wednesday D&D session. Usually we have Skittles as a snack, but the store owner hates that we do because they get all over the floor. So he said he would bring the snacks. He goes to the back and brings out a five pound bag of gummy bears. So I, as a gummy bear lover, go in head first. About an hour into the game, I start feeling unwell. So I ask if I can use their bathroom. He says the bathroom is out of order, sign and everything. 
At this point, my stomach feels like a war zone. The store owner asked if I was okay. My response with a blood red face was, Where's the nearest toilet? With a straight face, he says down the street at Jack's. So I, with my butt cheeks clenched, waddled out of the door to drive to Jack's. It was so bad that I had to take off my shirt and pants. Now a year later, I learned that the bathroom was working perfectly, and it was all a prank. A delicious treat that should be enjoyed, only after the following preparations have been made. 1. Make sure it's Friday and cancel all weekend plans. For good measure, go ahead and call in for Monday. Number two, call the city and make sure that your water bill is paid in full. Number three, visit your local hardware store and purchase a sink attachment for your garden hose as the toilet paper will quickly become too painful to bear. Number four, give advance notice to your family members, roommates, and neighbors unless you're keenly trying to give birth to a crushed watermelon while convincing your local SWAT team that both the screaming and the demonic noises are from you and a dynamic entry would only bring about more needless suffering. Number five, redo your bathroom with motivational pictures. Ones with slogans like, courage is fear hanging on one minute longer. The only easy day was yesterday, etc. I also advise posting the suicide prevention hotline number or having a dedicated friend or other support group to walk you through the low times. Lastly, I must strongly urge you to consider why you're thinking about buying this product. Is it a sense of deep self-loathing? A reckless sense of adventure? Are you researching dysentery? Perhaps you are a drill sergeant for some extreme commando unit seeking to break down the enemy's will to fight by airdropping these into their mist. If you are just curious, then let me say, oh fellow human, beware, because this life is dangerous enough. Next time I want a thrill, I'll skydive without a parachute. That way at least I'll have a chance. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this short. My wife came up with it. After I read it, I wanted to share it with you. If you like this, please leave me a thumbs up. Until next time, beware of gummy bears that you didn't buy yourself.